Last week, I did a video about Kant and intuition, and that's going to serve essentially as part one. So if you haven't watched that, I highly recommend going back really quick and watching that. It's not 100% necessary, but it'll really help moving forward. But anyways, my, in my video last week, we talked about intuition and how it is formed implicitly through pattern recognition, creating what Kant calls the phenomenal realm. When we are listening to our senses or our feelings, we implicitly create that realm, observe that realm, and ultimately live in that realm. And in that metaphorical story that I created about the personal suit and the gray suit, that phenomenal realm, that intuitive realm, is called the personal suit. But towards the end of that video, we discussed how there is a problem with the phenomenal realm, with that personal suit. And we, I wanted to cover the benefits of the gray suit, but I ran out of time. So in summary, the problem with the phenomenal realm, with that personal suit, is that our intuition is non-rational. It's not irrational, it's not crazy, it's non-rational. Meaning that it does not, our intuition does not care to dis, uh, differentiate between correlation and causation. So unfortunately, what we end up with is a lot of intuitions that are potentially false. And when we don't like those intuitions, we call them biases. Some of these more abrasive biases we even have names for. Things like sexism, racism, homophobia, bigotry, and prejudice. So how do we fix these problems? For Kant, it's stepping into the nominal realm. And in my metaphor, the nominal realm is stepping into the gray suit. And so I wanted to talk about the benefits and the necessity of the gray suit today. So when we put on our gray suit, what we're trying to do is see reality, see things as they really are, independent of our perspective. And so what we do is we try and remove our unique lens, our unique perspective on reality. And the emphasis there is on the word try. Kant seem to believe that you can't go into the nominal realm, you can't put on this gray suit and hold on to your intuition. The way that you get into the nominal realm, the way that you perceive reality there is through critical thought and speculation. So this is where I'm going to diverge from Kant a little bit. And it's not because I disagree with him on a fundamental level by any means, but I think there was more to intuition than I think Kant was led to believe. I think there's some sort of second form of intuition that moves beyond sensory experience and reliance on feelings. Let me explain. The Greek philosopher Plato believed in a concept called anamnesis. Anamnesis is the idea that we are exist, our souls existed before this life. And in that existence, we learned everything there is to know. And so every bit of learning that we do in this life is actually remembering because the soul already knows it. Now back to Kant. Kant rejected this frame of mind, this philosophy. He believed that the, uh, the process of gaining knowledge uh, relies more on human cognition and sensory experience. Now I don't think it really matters what I believe whether or not our souls existed before this life. And I don't think there's really any way to know. But I think we've all had that experience where we're learning something and it feels more like remembering. I'm not saying that we're remembering necessarily. Like the concept that you learn is so profound that it hits you at that soul level and it kind of feels more like remembering. I don't know what it is. 
Now let's merge the Kantian philo philosophy and the Platonic philosophy, Kant and Plato together. And now this is all me, this is 100% me. Merging two philosophical frameworks is very discouraged among philosophers because it just doesn't really make sense to do that. But the reason I want to do that is because I think they were both onto something and I think they both had good things and together they make something even better. So as we established in the first video, our intuition is non-rational, meaning that it can be misled or fooled. And so the idea of having the uh, nominal realm or that gray suit, stepping from the personal suit to the gray suit, is that we can remove ourselves from our own lived experience to hopefully see our biases and correct them. Because in the nominal realm, we're doing our best, we're trying our best to see reality, see things as they really are, independent of our perception, our point of view. So according to Kant, the nominal realm relies exclusively on speculation, on critical thought, on human cognition. Okay, now I wanna take a quick break and say that I hope that at some point in this discussion around Kant's view of the nominal realm, that you've been interested enough to take some time and try and get yourself into the nominal realm, to step away from that personal suit into the gray suit. Because if you haven't, maybe take some time right now and see if you can do that. For me, as I've learned about this stuff, it seems that it is a contemplative practice for me to get into the nominal realm. Richard Rohr, who is one of my favorite spiritual teachers, said that contemplation is being open to as much reality as possible. And I love that because that to me epitomizes what it means to be in the nominal realm. It is to be open and, and free of all of your previously held beliefs, your dogma, your opinions, your perspective. And that is vital for you to be able to correct those biases that everyone has. And so when I think of the nominal realm, I think of it as an openness, an expansiveness, and a freedom from those preconceived notions of reality. Whether or not they're true or not, letting go of all that is the way that you get into the nominal realm. It is also a place of love and grace, and a place that doesn't have judgment and pride, if that makes sense. So it is in the nominal realm where I can see Plato's idea of anamnesis could be more probable. I'm not saying that that's exactly what's happening, that our soul's remembering things, but that's kind of what it feels like when you're in the nominal realm, when you're experiencing reality as things really are, you're remembering how they are, instead of seeing through your lived experience how you think things are. And Kant being more logical and scientific wants cognition to be the driver in that realm. And while I agree with Kant that we need to leave our intuition behind, our preconceived thoughts, feelings, biases, and everything of that nature, we do need to leave that behind. But there's also something that we need to have there that is beyond human cognition. And once again, that's gonna sound so out there. But when I'm in the gray suit, and I try and do what Kant argues by bringing in cognition and speculation and critical thought, I'm trying to qualify and measure and quantify everything instead of learning from reality itself. And listen, I will never claim to be an expert on this stuff, and so maybe I am misunderstanding Kant since I am not classically trained in philosophy, but this nominal realm that Kant turned me on to has served as a gateway for me to feel integrate, to feel a sense of integration, a sense of unity, a sense of compassion, love, inner peace, and a connection to something bigger. 
And I think that's kind of what we're all seeking in this life. And, and, and for me, stepping into that nominal realm, stepping into that gray suit has been something useful for me to have that, that feeling that I think many of us are seeking. So I guess I just want to wrap this one up by asking you a question. Have you stepped into the nominal realm? Have you taken off your personal suit and stepped into the gray suit and experienced reality in a different way? And how was that for you? Do you feel like the nominal realm is a reality, is something, was Kant correct when he talked about the phenomenal realm and the nominal realm? What do you think about Plato's idea of anamnesis, about the soul knowing everything innately due to some sort of pre-existence or something like that? Or was he slightly off and there's something kind of in between Kant and Plato? I don't know. There's, I, I just, I found these two philosophical frameworks to be incredibly interesting and insightful. And they took me to a place that I don't even know if they meant to take me. And I just wanted to share that. So if these last two videos were interesting or helpful or insightful or anything, let me know in the comments, like uh, this video please, and subscribe to my channel. And like I always say, most importantly, share this with someone or just start a conversation with someone about this. I hope that that's ultimately what these are for people, is our conversation starters to take you to somewhere where you've never been intellectually or emotionally or spiritually or mentally. Anyways, thanks for watching. 